So I've shown you Cooler, and I and we looked at Crazy Chris playing with his red, green, blue lights. Um, in in years ago, I used to use three. I had three flashlights with uh, gelatin filters on them. I had a red <coughs> flashlight, a blue flashlight, and a green flashlight. And then we would put the flashlights on the on the whiteboard and see how they come up with white. If you're ever in theater, you'll see the same effect with the spotlights. So let's take a look at, at how this comes together on a web page. Anybody recognize this, this uh, photograph right here? Have you seen that before? I used it just a little bit ago. Well, this photograph originally came from iStock Photo, which is a place where you can buy photos really cheap to use on web pages. It's a really great resource that you can send your client out to and have them look at. And then I took the hand off of this, and this converted into our logo for Computer Careers. So when I brought in the logo for Computer Careers, what you saw is this hand here, and I took off the color spectrum, and we added in the blues and the golds from uh, the school colors. So you can see the powerful effect of color of, I wonder if I still have that here. So if I go from the image, here's the same exact hand, only with the, the blues and golds of the school color. And then here's the original image with all the colors. So you see, again, now this is subtle and subtle. So this is subtle as far as color use, as opposed to this, which is a little bit more subtle. But that right there shows you, do you see how I followed these color schemes to match everything else we did with the college? So when I use the college, South Central College logo, this logo goes, it matches it very well. So they don't, they don't uh, fight against each other. They work really well on the page. So I'm going to show you how... We've already determined how to do a color scheme using color, but I'm going to really focus on using the red, green, blue, the RGB color system, which is going to get us into a little bit of hex code, which is going to seem like math, but uh, it'll be well worth it. And after you start using it for a while, you don't really even think about it. You get a real good feel of it. I'll show you some memory tricks on the RGB As I showed in the movies, we can break our light down into different colors. And if we take this spectrum and put it in a circle, we come up with a color wheel. <coughs> and then these show the, the different types of colors uh, selections. Now, there's the fashion police out there, and if people wear stripes and plaids, or if they did in the old days, the fashion police would uh, laugh and ridicule them. Well, the same thing is true for web pages. If you put together your web page so it looks like clown pants, then people are going to have that <coughs> level of trust towards your web page. If you use a basic color scheme, like any of these here, that are based on the color wheel, your, your page is going to come across much stronger and much more authoritarian, uh, uh, with more authority. So here's the monochrome again. There's Peter grabbing his blues again. And the anoglis, so that's two colors next to each other. And again, you got to do all of this when you use the, color, the, the cooler charge. Here's the split complementary. So here we go across the color wheel. Now you have to be a little careful with this with the red and the green. What is that? Red and green. That's Christmas. So be a little careful with your red and greens. Here's a triad, triadic. So that's the three colors. Now this gets to be quite busy. You can see this page here is getting lots of different colors and it's getting really, really busy. My preference is to stay more to the monochromatic uh, or the two color scheme. So here's my mono, here's, here's my, uh, my two opposing colors, so you can see I have some 
blues in here and I have some golds. And you can see how I pick those off the computer careers. So here's the RGB system. The way it's set up is we start with a pound sign and then this is going to be a number going from 0 to 255 telling us how much red. The next two numbers are going to go from 0 to 255 saying how much green and the same thing for the blue. Now you notice we only have two digits here. If we do it in decimal we're going to need three digits to get the highest number. So what we've done, and, and the uh, computer scientists that developed all this, what they did is they used hexadecimal, so FF is the same as 255 in decimal. And I think I'll show you in a minute on how this works. But basically, you can think of it goes from 0 to 9, and then the letters after that, A, B, C, D, E, F, are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if we were going to turn on all the red, that would be FF. And I can show you that down here. So here's all the red, no green, and no blue. The same thing here. Here's no red, all green. We got green turned on full blast, and no blue. Here we turned off the red and the green, but we turned the blue up full blast. So you can see, and these are the primaries. Now, let's say we turn the lights all off. Zero, 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 zero. That's easy, right? That's going to give us black. What if we turn them all on equal? So we put everything full blast. Then we get white. If you do... The, the numbers equal all the way across. So here's C, 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 C. We come up with a gray. What if I did a 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1? What color would we have? Remember, if we do all the colors the same, it's going to be a shade of gray. So what's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 going to be? A light gray or a dark gray? Can be a dark gray. What's E E E E E E E going to be? A really really light gray. What about nine 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 nine? Like a medium gray. Now there's a shortcut here on the grays. We can just do three letters, and the browser is going to know that you mean all six letters. So if I did CCC here with a pound sign, then that would be the same as what you see here. So when you're working with the grays, you can, you can just do three characters. It's a nice little shortcut. Notice that these are zeros. They're not O's. So don't use the letter O's in here, even though we have letters. The only letters you can use are from A to F. That has to do with the hexadecimal numbering system. So what is this counting by hex? Well, because we have 10 fingers, we count 1 to 10, and then we start over again with 11, 12, 13. If we use binary numbers, we would go 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and on up. They pile up pretty fast because it's binary, we can only have a 1 or a 0, so we have to keep adding them up on different columns. Hexadecimal is a happy medium between the two. We go from 1 to 10. This is A is 11, B is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What's 11? It's 17. 12 is 18. So let's try this on your computer. Go ahead and, and do uh, click on your Start button. Choose Run, and then type in the word Calc, C-A-L-C. 
This is kind of nice to know anyway, how to get to your calculator very quickly. Now, change the view to scientific, and that will open up the, cal the, the calculator so you can do some of this stuff. And type in 255. So that's decimal. That's how we think. Now click on the hex radio button. Where is that? Um, it should be along the top. It, hmm? Oh, so instead of instead of scientific, you you click on programmer. Okay, so try view programmer. So that's on Windows 7. They, they changed it on me. They, they updated the calculator. Holy mackerel. So did, did you find the hex then? Okay, and if you click on it, does it does the display change to FF? Now, keep in mind, the reason we're doing this is to save space. It's a lot nicer to say FF instead of 255. And especially when you're working with, with the three numbers. So instead of saying 255, 255, 255, we're able to say FF, FF, FF. After a while, it kind of just rolls off your fingers. <laughs> now, if we don't have any red, green, or blue, then it's going to be 000. That's in decimal and in hex. So here's your colors. Now, these are pretty garish colors. I'll tell you some nice shortcuts that will, will make be real pleasant on your pages. For the red, if you use anything from 80 to 90, 0, 0, 0, 0, that will give you a really nice, pleasing uh, maroon, reddish, nice dark red. On your green, if you go 0, 0, 80, 85, 90, any, in that range, it'll give you a really nice forest green, hunter green. And of course, which will be darker, 80 or 90? <coughs> well, look down here, which is darker, 000 or FFF? So what's the rule? The lower the number, the darker the color. So which is going to be a darker green, 0, 0, 80, 0, 0, or the 90? So the 80 is going to be a darker green than if you go up to the 90. And if you want a nice, rich navy blue, a really luscious navy blue, again, go 0, 0, 0, 0, 80, and do a range 80 to 90. When I first started this, I did everything in 90s, and then I started experimenting down to the 80s, and I really like the 80s. And then again, if it's all the same number, you can go a range from really dark gray, which would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or you could do three ones, all the way up to E, 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 and then all the numbers in between. Oh, so here's... Here's what the rich maroon looks like. Here's the dark forest green. And here's the dark navy blue. And here's the shortcut for all those E's. You can just do three E's for a gray and three ones for a very dark gray. You can also get your own color chart. You can just do a, a web search for color chart. There's hundreds of them out there. But here's the difference. Let me zoom in on this color chart here. And you notice for each of these shades, here's my hex code for this color. And here's my decimal code. So if we want to think like human beings, the red would be 204 pieces of red. What's the most red we can have? 255. So this is the most uh, green and the most blue. Do you see how much simpler this is to have six digits instead of nine digits? So this is why we've, we've switched over and done this in hex. It's just so much nicer. And after you, you use it a while, 
it, it gets really easy to use. Good old Wikipedia has really, really good information on, the, on colors and hex codes. And I think we have some color tables here. And you can see they go into all the dirty details. So here's all the different colors and their hex codes. So you can you could bookmark this, and then when you go to a color, you can find out the hex codes really quickly looking at it. Here's the web safe colors that Deb was mentioning earlier. And so these are the 255 colors that we could use on every monitor. Now, this is going to reemphasize what Deb brought up earlier about not using white or light colored letters against black grounds. And you want your backgrounds to be really, really quiet. So like a picture frame, they shouldn't call attention to, the set, to themselves. Keep the colors light. And if, if, if you choose a color for a background, then go a couple shades lighter. Um, new web developers invariably pick their colors too dark. Um, I didn't make any comments on this last project, but I saw a lot of dark greens, uh, I, I think there was a dark orange in there. It's really, really hard to look at web, pa web pages that have these bright, garish colors. You want them to be really, really soft and mild. Now, a white page is hard for some people to look at because it, it causes like their eyes kind of reflect back. Because remember, these are little tiny spotlights shooting into our eyes. It's not like we're looking at the printed page where it's reflected. Uh, when we're looking at a monitor, that light is literally coming right at us from the monitor. So I've talked to a lot of people that have sensitive eyes, and they like just a really, really light shade of gray for a background. And it kind of knocks down the, the, the harshness. Keep your background simple. Uh, another thing that new people like to do is put photographs in the background. But then you can't read the text that goes over parts of the photograph. In the future, I'll show you a way around that by using a parchment technique where your, your text background is tra semi-transparent so you can see the background image behind it, but you can still read the text. Now, how are we going to use these colors? Well, we're going to do some CSS. And I think I have a chart here. These are the, the three parts of the CSS. We have the selector, and you've already seen this, the little CSS I've shown you. So this right here is the selector. So this tells us what we're going to change or what we're going to style. And then inside the curly braces is our selector rules. So this is our styling rules. And right after the, the first rule <coughs> excuse me, is a colon. And then this is the value of the rule. So here we want to say a background dash color is going to be uh, this hex code. And what I found out, and I really strongly, strongly recommend that you do this, is you put a comment here saying what that color is. Because I have no clue what this color is myself, and I wrote this. So always leave yourself a comment saying what color it is. So let's open up a web page and start fiddling around with this. You can open, open up your template that you've set up. And if you don't already, you can set up a, a style tag. So set up your style and your stop style. And then we're going to do a body selector and uh, use the background dash color to change our background. So make sure you have your spelling correctly. That's with a dash. If you have one character wrong, then your CSS won't work. You'll also see in a, in a few minutes that, I, that nowadays we format this different. We usually put 
our rule on a separate line, and then we close with a curly brace on a third line. Notice that our styles are up in the head. This is not counted by Google in the search engine, so this does not affect our SEO. This is a really important thing because that means we can do lots and lots of color work and font work and styling, and it's not going to uh, water down our SEO in our content. You also notice I put an H1, so something's going to show up. <laughs> And then I, I could have put this in a paragraph. So I could have put a P tag here and a stop P tag. So I've shown you how to create a color scheme. I've talked about the RGB numbering system, the red, green, blue. And then I showed you how to add color to your cascading style sheets.